or you can say as a journalist. Now, I want to introduce your life, your work, how you got into studying all these aspects of Darshan Shastra, what motivated you, and then in different stages of life, how it was, your academic uh, life as well, Pune, JNU, abroad, all that. So that will be one segment. And the various topics in which you worked, translations you did, or even uh, explanatory uh, things you did on Nyaya, etc. We will discuss that in one segment. Second segment will talk about your how and why you and Ujjalaji started this Rishi Rana Trust. And what work it has been doing in the last 25 years almost, quarter century or so. And in general, outside of that also, how you have been lecturing everywhere, abroad and here, and you know, anybody who is serious and organized a conference, you have been speaking about Indian knowledge systems and Nyaya, etc. Uh, IITs, universities, everywhere. So that work of dissemination of this knowledge. So we'll talk about that. I'll just be asking you uh, short yes, questions. Yes, yes. Yes. And you can you remind me. Uh, you can keep talking, explaining that. Thing. Then uh, last segment, uh, I'll be I'll ask questions about Darshan Shastra. What are the common misunderstandings, myths, or prejudices about it? Among the modern educated educated mm -hmm. Indians, you know. uh, so you just clarify all, all those whatever. So that that will convey that message also. Mm -hmm. This is a general plan. Okay, you want to start? Hmm. Chalu hai. Chalu hai. Oh. oh. <laughs> yes, yes. Chalu hai. You can read it later. Okay. <coughs> Sir, Namaskar, and uh, it gives me great pleasure. I've been uh, attending uh, some of your lectures for over the last seven years, various workshops, and uh, greatly benefited from uh, your knowledge and your, uh, um, with, you know, from your whole style of educating students who as long as, like, I have greatly benefited because anybody, your eyes, I have seen you literally in every workshop I have attended at least seven now, I think six or seven. And uh, each one has had 40, 50 students from all over India, some from abroad also. And with great empathy, depending on, doesn't matter what is their level, they may be PhD students, they may be faculty, they may be totally novices like me who have no background in Sanskrit. And you have very patiently explained various aspects, even random questions of people like me. <laughs> and so I'm very grateful to you. Um, so I would like uh, our um, audience and uh, leaders to uh, readers to know about your uh, how you got into what attracted you to Bharatiya Darshanas and your journey from childhood. Education matters. Uh, I hail from West Bengal. There is a small town, now it has become big, but I am talking about uh, 1950s before that. So I was born in Raiganj, which is the west, at the time, western part of the district before partition act, uh, called Dinajpur. So we were in the other part, which went to Pakistan, to East Pakistan. Uh, a place called, a village called Thakurgaon. There my parents used to live, my own family. And when my father came to know about the possibility of partition 
of the country. Then he decided to move from that place and come to Raiganj. Uh, and he came to Raiganj. I was born in 1946. 20th July 1946. So my Childhood is in Raigan up to graduation. And uh, I never went to primary school. In those days, uh, primary school was optional. Everyone used to get educated at home. And same thing happened with me. So, up to fourth, I did not go to school and uh, one day my grandfather said that now it is time that he should be put into high school but before that he said that go and ask a primary school head of headmaster Gopal Chandra Mandal that was his name and tell whether he is fit to be admitted in class 5 in the high school. And then he took took me to that school and uh, Gopal Chandra Mandal, he asked me a few questions. And then he paused and then he said, I, I told him, Samaptam. Mm. And then he said, my God, he, he said, they used to call my father Pandichi. Loving, loving address. Was your father a Sanskrit no, scholar? No, he was not a scholar, a scholar, but he was a great lover of Sanskrit. My grandfather was a Sanskrit scholar. And my father had told me that he will not do civil engineering. And that he was not. <laughs> so he will not go for science, he will go for Sanskrit. So then he advised him that no, he is not necessary that he should be admitted in primary school to straight away go and admit him in high school. So I reached the high school. There was a very, very famous high school in that town. The town was very small, but very old town. And maybe more, more than 200 years old in the school. Coronation High School. Now later on it was called Coronation uh, higher secondary multi-purpose high school that began in course of time. So I got educated in that high school. One thing happened is that when I went to class 5, Sanskrit used to be taught from class 5. And the Sanskrit teacher who became my real guru later on, he was so happy to see me because I was in a very traditional dress and uh, he called me and he introduced me to the whole class and uh, we started learning. So he was teaching Sanskrit but he was the head of traditional high school, the traditional part shall also. The same teacher who was teaching in high school was also teacher there. So after the class was over, he asked me that what are you going to do at home? I told him that well, I will go and play football because that was the age. And very near my house, my house is situated in a bank of a river. Sure. So we did not have bathroom. We used to go take bath in the river. Mm. That was our business. So, and on the same bathroom there was one cremation ground mm. and then one a big uh, football, mm. uh, this thing, field. field. So I told him that I will go and play. He said that oh, you want to play, not so. Why don't you come with me? I have three children at home and you can play there. I could not follow. So I followed him and he took me to his house 
and this was, this was uh, the season of mango. Uh, so he had a mango yatra. So a lot of mango was lying under the bed. Correct. Um, so he said, okay, go there, take as many mangoes you want, and uh, that uh, the rice uh, muri, what do you call it? Murmure? Mm -hmm. Murmura. Ah, ah. Puffs. Okay. Puffs. Mm -hmm. Murmura. Rice puffs. Mm -hmm. uh, so he said, from the tin there is uh, murmure, mm -hmm. and you take and mango, mm -hmm. and take. <laughs> And after you finish, my children are there, with them we play. But it is only for one hour. Play is only for one hour. The moment it is six o'clock, you will have to come to me. And then I will tell you what we have. And he was running the traditional Pashala called Madhusudana Chatushpati. Chatushpati was the name of the Pashala because four Vedas were being taught and uh, he was a great grammarian uh, my, his name was Sita Kanta Acharya Guru I am talking about mm. so I played and then he came, he came to me then he took me to a room how old were you? Huh? how old were you? I was uh, maybe uh, so when I was Matriculation, I was 16 years old, so... Okay. 8 or 10. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, and uh, my grandfather used to recite Astadhyaya. Uh, so by listening to him, the entire Astadhyaya was here. <laughs> then he used to recite the dictionary of Sanskrit called Amar Kosha. In in Sanskrit dictionary is in poetry, I mean in uh, poem, in shlokas. And that is called, um, in the earliest dictionary is called Amar Kosha. And he used to recite in the morning. So automatically, that also went into my ear. So dictionary was here, the Amar Kosha was here. All this thing, automatically I received. And then he started formal training in the uh, traditional Pashtana called Madhusundra Satishpati. And then he told me everything, this is what will be, will be. Every day you will come here at 3, 6 o'clock and we will study for two hours. My father did not know this. And then he was searching that when has this boy gone? And in those days there was no electricity. So he came with a hurricane, that lantern. Looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> and collected me from he can he, he could realize that maybe that he might have gone to Sita Kanta Acharya's house. He might have taken him. And there was no phone, nothing of the sort, no communication. So he came with that and then this is how my I began. Got introduced to the traditional method of learning Sanskrit and Sanskrit to the Shastra. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of with the Vyakarana Shastra. The primary requirement was that you must have follow knowledge of structure of Sanskrit mm -hmm. That was the method. Mm -hmm. And then slowly literature and other. So I did the Vyakarana Tirtha. Tirtha is the graduate level okay. course, okay. but I was in school, okay. but, I, <laughs> okay. but I, traditionally I became graduate. Mm. Then I did uh, Veda Tirtha, I was like a graduate okay. in Veda, like that. And the uh, schools were asking me to leave the school and join as a pandit. Okay, uh, to teach. Uh, uh, but I was fortunate that I had an opportunity to get exposure to traditional method of learning and also normal modern high school that I joined in class 5. This continued. Another thing that happened, as I told you that my house is, was situated in the bank of a river, on the same bank there was an ashram. 
गौड़ीय मठ तो चैतन्य महाप्रभु गौड़ीय गौड़ी संप्रदाय एंड माई फादर वॉज इनिशिएटेड इन दैट सो एवरी डे इन द मॉर्निंग ही इज टू आस्क अस टू गो टू अटेंड आरती सो टेक बाथ चेंज योर क्लो एंड गो टू द आश्रम so the bhakti ah the same so there i used to go there also there was one a great scholar uh surendranath das that was his name and his job was that when the children will come for arati he will also ask him not to go home immediately <laughs> sit <laughs> catch them young <laughs> and sit there for an hour and a half and he will teach something and do you know what he is to teach outside the syllabus he is to teach three things sanskrit language mathematics and english oh. nothing to do with the course in school or anything this is what he is to do all selfless work <laughs> and that created so much interest in this area you know I was mad after mathematics, you know, mm. initially. Mm. So when I completed my uh, higher secondary mm. from the Coronation School, mm. without telling my father, mm. I went to the college mm. and took admission in honors in mathematics. Okay. <laughs> mathematics. But my father's friend used to. Happened to be Sanskrit professor in that university, okay. in, in that college. So he next day he came. Hey, Parudnusha, your your son has not gone for Sanskrit. He has taken mathematics. And then he called me. What is this? He took me. Come on. So he went there and changed this. He said no, no, no. But I told him that please allow me to study mathematics. So the combination was in those days. You know, it was so easy. So Sanskrit honors. and mathematics okay minor major for ah, okay for graduation okay so i did graduation with this combination oh okay and this was the history of training mm-hmm. you know outside the syllabus in the kumar uh, brahmacharya ashram mm-hmm. the ashram name is kumar brahmacharya ashram gaudiya math gaudiya math gaudiya math ashram and what is the name of the college sir uh, raiganj college right raiganj college now it has become university yes. <laughs> now the other day i went there okay. and i delivered lecture and i told him that i used to learn in it that has become university now so this was up to graduation i was in raiganj up to that my father had a lo- very ro- strong desire that i should go to kashi so after graduation he advised me to go to varanasi and i went to varanasi and offered ma with the vedic group but which kashi vidyapeeth or bhu no bhu bhu banaras hindu university okay so i went to banaras hindu university and offered the group in beda in ma okay while doing that there was another you see these are all fortune <laughs> i don't know either. teachers were like that So your own teacher must be observing me. Mm. Yeah, this this boy has interest in, in I mean, inquiring about language, the structure, this and that. Mm. So he said that I will advise you to do one more MA after completion of this mm. in comparative philology. Mm. You know, in those days, some when Sanskrit was made known. Mm. and by jones william jones mm-hmm. historical Asiatic speech society, uh, mm-hmm. society. Mm-hmm. then the westerners were uh, mm-hmm. dancing mm-hmm. and the new discipline came into being mm-hmm. indo european linguistics mm-hmm. and all that mm-hmm. and sunil kumar chatterjee the national professor in those days mm-hmm. he was sent by ashutosh mukherjee mm-hmm. to get trained in that area of linguistics historical linguistics and come and open a department of comparative philology in calcutta university so then that struck me that okay then what where can i go i asked him he said that you are coming from bengal in calcutta university there is a department of comparative philology 
why don't you go and do another inning? Mm. Then I thought that I should ask my father, mm. because already I have done one inning. If he needs my help uh, in samsara, mm. then I should ask him. I went and asked him, he said that as long as I am here <laughs> in this office, why should you bother about all this thing? Whatever the teacher tells, yeah. keep on doing. So I went to Calcutta University, did another thing. Exams were over, and then I had no other work. What were they teaching in philology at that time? Histo it was historical linguistics. Okay. Means Evolution. Uh, so how Sanskrit has evolved? Very so, classical. Uh, so they they created a theory, you know, then Aryan invasion theory and all that was very very prominent in those days. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, Max Muller. Uh, so, so they said that where from Sanskrit has come. Mm -hmm. So they postulated that uh, William Jones pointed out the similarity between all the classical European languages mm -hmm. with Sanskrit mm -hmm. and Persian, Iranian, and all that. Mm -hmm. and, Avesta, and, and, Avesta, and all that. Yeah. And then they thought that these people must be living together somewhere in Central Asia. Mm -hmm. That was the theory. Yeah. And on the basis of which a new discipline of study was created mm -hmm. called Indo-European Linguistics. Mm -hmm. And I joined that course. So I came to know the history of Sanskrit mm -hmm. in the background of... From the European analysis. Ah, like, like, <laughs> How they are analyzing yeah. it. That helped me a lot, I tell you. You gain a new vision altogether, no? So a traditional a vision is already with me, mm -hmm. and I am introduced to another vision mm -hmm. in Calcutta University. Mm -hmm. And then I had no other work, so then I started searching a job. Mm -hmm. Sundarban, you have heard the name mm -hmm. Sundarban. Maybe. So then they started a college, and they were in need of a Sanskrit professor. Mm -hmm. Advertisement came, I applied, mm -hmm. and within three days I, I got the call, mm -hmm. go and join. I joined. But I was searching other things also. So in Statesman, <coughs> the newspaper, mm. I found an advertisement that there is a center of advanced study in Sanskrit University in Pune. Mm. And they are, this is the only center in the whole country established by UGC, okay. University Grants Commission. And they had a number of uh, amount of scholarship for doing PhD. Okay. I was very much excited. I just sent one application, handwritten application. And which year was this? It was in 60, 68. 68. So then, then uh, it came. Mm. That was I got selected here to the university. So the selection letter came. R.N. Dandekar was a director here, mm -hmm. Ram, Ram, Ramchandra Narayan Dandekar. Yes. He was a famous Indologist. Yeah. Yeah. So he was there was also an economist. No, no, no. There was another Dandekar. Okay. There was another Dandekar. In economics school, I mean school of economics. Gokhale School. Gokhale So I got, and then I was confused what to do. I should leave the job and go, or should I take some leave and then go? So I had my teacher, Suniti Kumar Chatterjee, mm. sitting in the National Library, Calcutta. So I went to him and told him, I am in a dilemma, what to do? So Suniti Kumar Chatterjee was your teacher in Calcutta? Uh, in Calcutta University oh, okay. at the time. Okay. <laughs> Great man. <laughs> so, and then his, 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 his student was Sukumar Singh. Mm. His name was Imhotep Yeah. So he had retired, but he was taking classes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is how he had retired. Okay. So I went to him and said, Sir, you know, what to do? Mm -hmm. He said, You throw your job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 job, you will get hundreds of jobs. Don't worry about job. Go, run. And he wrote a letter mm -hmm. for Dandekar mm -hmm. that I am sending my student, etc. etc. I just resigned from the job, came to Pune. And I had already selected some areas for my study. Mm -hmm. So 
in the line of the training they received in Banaras Hindu University, mm -hmm. that historical linguistics mm -hmm. and uh, Calcutta University. Mm -hmm. So I have several. So you know, the earliest book is Rigveda. Mm -hmm. And Rigveda, to preserve Rigveda as it is, mm -hmm. there is a tradition of part of the oral tradition, no? Mm -hmm. So in oral tradition, how to preserve the text? Mm -hmm. And they created several methods, mm -hmm. modes of recitation, mm -hmm. keeping in view that this will preserve the text without the loss of a single syllable. So the first recitation mode is called Sangeeta. Mm -hmm. Next is called Padapad. Mm -hmm. Running text, you have to break it in Sandeer, no? Mm -hmm. So, uh, mm. so that was the text mm. called Padapata. Yep. And then I thought that unless one knows the grammar of the language, mm. how can he prepare this uh, text for the Pata? So he must be a grammarian. Mm. But his grammar is not available today. Mm. But his application of the knowledge mm. is, is available today with me. So why not reconstruct? His knowledge of grammar. Mm -hmm. And that person was Sakalya, who did the Padapata of the Rigveda. So, so it is pre Pandanian. Pre Pandanian. Mm -hmm. So thousands years before. Mm -hmm. Then I, I came with that topic. Mm -hmm. And then Ghatge's name, you know, A.M. Ghatge. Mm -hmm. He was a, a great linguist. Mm -hmm. S.M. Katre mm -hmm. also was a great linguist. Indicate. Was uh, yeah. Mahama was there, Kane was there? Was Kane, there Kane was in, uh, in Mumbai in that case. Achha. Asiatic Society. He, uh, he was not here. Okay. But he was alive. Okay. Uh, he was alive. Okay. So I went to him and I said, This is my idea. You see, nowadays students come to you for problems. Me the problem. <laughs> I went to the problem to the teacher. Okay. I want to work on this. And then he was so happy. Mm. He sat with me and prepared the whole thing. And then he said that, okay, I am in Deccan College, mm. but better I will suggest you that since you are going to reconstruct the knowledge of grammar of Sanskrit language as available with Shakalya, mm. then I will direct you, you should work under a grammarian. Mm. So there was a great, great grammarian in Pune University called S. D. Joshi. So he sent me to that. And then he accepted and I started working. And I could know the history of not only Sanskrit language, but also the history of grammatical thought in India. So I reconstructed the entire grammar known to Shakadeva. That was my PhD work. And that book which you published, pre published. Yeah, grammar, that is product of that. Okay. Or was it your thesis itself? Yeah. I, I incorporate all that I did yeah. in that thesis yeah. and also I did and also took some research of some other other persons mm. and brought out this. Mm. So that was the journey yeah. uh, in uh, uh, up to up to, up to PhD. Yeah. <laughs> and then after I submitted the uh, thesis. Then S.M. Katre, the director of the Deccan College, mm. post the Research Institute, mm. we had a very uh, UNESCO project, mm. uh, Dictionary of Sanskrit on Historical Principles. We're going on. It started at that time? Ah. My very old place. Mm. It is going on. Yeah, Even yeah, yeah, I know. I visited it in 2007. Sanskrit they said course. we have produced, we have come till um, or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and seven or eight volumes that produced. Yeah. Now they say they produce more. It will take several hundred years mm. to complete. A huge data, no? Huge. And they said we have chosen 1500 texts from which contextual meanings and all that. So then the, direct, the, the person who initiated that project, mm. S.M. Katri, okay. uh, the director of Deccan College, okay. he met me. I mean, I met him. Mm. And then he said that, now what are you doing? I said, no, I, come, I have submitted my PhD thesis, so I'm free. So he said, why don't you come and join? <laughs> <laughs> so, I lexicography, though. <laughs> so I joined Deccan College. And that gave me another 
the opportunity to learn many things, mm. how to prepare dictionary, how to, so so many things I learned. Uh, and the greatest thing that happened that changed my life is I met two stalwarts, traditional stalwarts in Deccan College. One is to my gurus who shaped me the way that you see me now. Mm. So initially my interest was grammar, you can see. Mm. My interest was grammar. Mm. And when I met these two stalwarts, one is Shivaram Krishna Shastri from Annamala University and another Srinivas Shastri from same university. Okay. One was grammarian and Mimamsaka okay. and the other one Srinivas Shastri was in the Yaika and Vedanti. Okay. <laughs> so Padavakya Praman. <laughs> uh, now you can see why I say that like this. Now you can see. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. So they more than God for me. So they accepted me as their children, as their child, and taught me for 17 years in life. This is after PhD? Yeah. After doing PhD. 17 years I studied under these two purposes. Vyakarana. Reading means, you know, mm. Sutra, mm. Vashya, Vartika, Commentary, over commentary, over commentary, over commentary. So entire thought history you mm. study, you know. Mm. This is the method of learning. Mm. Uh, Were they giving lectures or it was self-study and then going to them with uh, prob you know problems to be solved? No, a text. I used to take a text. But were they giving lectures on that? No, no, no. Or you were studying on your own? I, I was to go and sit before him. Oh, okay. So actually, and he will teach me. Oh, okay. Uh, so actually... Mm. He will teach me. Okay. And then, side by side, what I started doing, I started translating it because I was trained in modern uh, education also. Mm. So I st started translating that into English. Okay. So I will learn yesterday. Mm. At night I will translate. And next day, he knew, he knew English also. Mm. Mm. I will show him. Mm. Mm. And uh, when he will certify, mm. <laughs> This is how I got it corrected, 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 corrected. And all these things I learned under these two teachers. They have, and then my interest from grammar was diverted towards, because grammar, otherwise grammar is the basic thing required. So I'll be requiring every time that I used to do. But Mimamsa and logic, Naya Shastra, these are added to my this thing. And then my teacher is D. Joshi. At the time there was no post for Indian logic in Pune University. Okay. So he created a post, he got a post <laughs> from UGC. Okay. And then he invited me. <laughs> <laughs> so you come here. And I joined the department, Center of Advanced Study, where I was student. I joined there as a teacher and slowly slowly I became the director of the Center of Advanced Study in Sanskrit and served the center for 20 years as director. So up to 2006 I was in the, in the middle, in the meantime, 2000, 2001 and 2, Jawaharlal Nehru University did not have a department of Sanskrit. Oh, okay. And Karan Singh, you know, Karan mm -hmm. Singh, yeah. he was the chancellor of the university. Mm. So they were thinking of. He is also a Sanskrit scholar, right? He he, he also is a Sanskrit scholar. Mm. He has studies Upanishads are very. very, very At least he quotes. <laughs> uh, and uh, so they were thinking of establish a center there. So they invited me. Then I took two years leave from Pune University and went there, established the center for uh, Sanskrit studies in JNU, created syllabus, trained and made selections of teachers, everything I did and then I came back, came back here. 
this is how all this happened. So from Raigans to VHU to Pune to uh, Calcutta University to Pune University, then to JNU, then again coming back to Pune University, and in finally in 2006 I retired. <laughs> but in between, we have heard of some very good uh, Sanskrit centers abroad, especially in Germany, in other countries also. Uh, you visited. So what happened in 1988, 1988 uh, our centers, our advanced study in Sanskrit, had a exchange program with Humboldt University. So one professor, Professor Morgan Roth came here mm. and he said, he requested the then director, Professor Joshi, mm. that why don't you spare Professor Jha for mm. some time to come to us. Mm. And then he agreed. Mm. And then in 1988, I went to Berlin mm. and taught there again Indian logic mm. for three years, uh, for, for three months, okay. three months. Mm. So this is how I went to Germany. Mm. Then they had, I mean, our center had a lot of collaboration with different universities of Japan. Mm. Uh, Buddhist, you know, Buddhism. Mm. And you know, Buddhist and Nyaya, mm. this dialogue is a, I mean, uh, path changing intellectually. So many students used to come to Pune University. And when they come to know that there is a chance of learning Nyaya, mm. you know, I am there. Mm. So every year, so many students used to come. Mm. So they went, they entered into a, a, an agreement. Mm. So Nagoya University mm. and Pune University mm. had a exchange program. Okay. Through that program also, I was invited. Mm. I went there as a visiting professor okay. and taught in Nagoya, mm. in Tokyo, in Osaka, many universities I taught. Mm. And this went, so almost in every university you will find my school. And you had a Japanese student also? Yeah. <laughs> Kojo Sato. Uh, even, even now, mm. on the... I know, it's Facebook. I met him on Facebook. <laughs> so almost every university where Buddhism is being taught, mm. you will find my student. Okay. Yeah. Every university in Japan. 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 So this is how Japan. Mm. Then I went to Mauritius. Mm. Then Switzerland, Lausanne University of Lausanne. Okay. Okay. There also I taught as a visiting professor. Okay. So in this way, mm. uh, did you go any time to US also? US I didn't go. Okay. Yeah. So you never met Matilal. Yes, I met Matilal. Matilal Krishna Matilal. Matilal. He was he was asking me to come. I see. Uh, yeah. He was asking. He me was to also come. an AI uh, <laughs> but. Uh, we decided that we will not go there. <laughs> okay. But one of his students, I think, Janardhan Ganesh. Yeah, he, he attended my uh, program. Okay. okay. In uh, when I started uh, taking classes on Nyaya mm -hmm. at different levels, mm -hmm. then scholars from all over the world used to come and join. Okay. And Janardhan Ganesh also came and joined at Advanced Study Shimla. Okay. I was teaching there. I see. So he, he attended that okay. program. <laughs> so this is how the whole journey. So this is the journey till 2006. But before that... But one, uh, one thing I, I, I should tell you. That I was fortunate in meeting teachers and getting exposure to various modes of thinking. No? Mm. Uh, traditional, modern, <coughs> ultra-modern, whatever. Mm. And even the, what you call, philosophy departments. Mm. These students also used to join. Mm. So when they used to present something, I received that mode also. Mm. I got exposure to that also. And the greatest thing that happened in my life, that I got my partner, mm. Mm. Professor Vijayalaji. She also belonged to the same discipline, mm. Nyaya, Mimamsa, mm. 
and Veda, Vedas. In addition, she had training in Buddhism. I see. Uh, and so I got everything. Under one roof. And this is how, I mean, had she not been here, you know, mm. so many things I have not been able to do. Mm. 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 Just real partner. Yeah. Yeah. So anything I suppose something is missing in my mind, I cannot understand, I will ask her. Mm. That then she will tell me the Pali source. Okay. And then she will She had just studied Pali. Pali also. Okay. Yeah. So, so was the, there a Pali department in Pune? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Pali and Prakrit. Now I don't know whether they exist, but so in those there, days, Kosambi, the, no, the, all that, they had there studied the, Pali. Yeah. There are scholars there, Mahesh Devkar. I think. Yeah, yeah. Yes, there is a different department now. Okay. Yeah. Pali, Prakrit and Pali were together. Mm. Now they are different. Right. Yeah. Um, when did this idea of setting up a trust come to you? Yeah. So, you can imagine when I was, like from childhood, when I was introduced to this knowledge system, these are all knowledge systems with which I was introduced, right from very early age. I, and I'm side by side, I'm, I'm in a modern education stream. So when I study, let us say, English grammar, and I have studied Sanskrit grammar. I mean, my God, this kind of clarity I don't find there. Mm. So why not this knowledge should be made available to them? Mm. So when I came to university education, mm. I started suggesting to all my colleagues mm. that why not have, why not introduce these traditional mm. contributions, mm. Indian contribution mm. to the field which is which is new new field. Mm -hmm. So they will be enriched, mm -hmm. and in turn we will also be enriched. Mm -hmm. But as it it happens, you know, nobody took it seriously. Mm -hmm. Then what I did, you know, finally at the center of advanced study in Sanskrit, I created a new course, mm -hmm. MA in India, MA in Sanskrit linguistics. Okay. Also, another MA course in Indian logic and epistemology. Okay. Nowhere in the world. Really? Course. Yes. Okay. These courses I created here. Mm. My goodness. Mm. Aiming that mm. the learners will come here and get it. And what what, what was the content of those courses? 50% mm. from the tradition and 50% from the modern trend. So they they don't know what is what is here, okay. and they don't know what is what is going on there. I wanted to bring them together to start a dialogue and get enriched by each other's. Uh, this is so so lacking in our system. I mean, even take Sanskrit departments and philosophy departments. They know right? nothing. Sanskrit generally they'll study Kalidas and Sahitya that sort of thing. Mm. They, they normally do not study Darshan. Mm. Then nowadays, let us say there is one paper, Bharatiya Darshan, something like that, Vedic studies, whatever mm. it is. But then the philosophy departments have nothing on Indian yeah. studies. Oh. Indian colleges, Indian universities. Oh. Yes. In the philosophy department, they are all like Greek that. and everybody else, European. And now that you have attended several programs, yeah. have you not come to this conclusion that unless you study other systems, exactly. you cannot understand any system, any right. philosophical right. system. Can you understand Vedanta without knowing Buddhism, without knowing Jainism, without knowing Nyaya, without knowing Mimamsa, without knowing Sankhya, without knowing Yoga? Is it possible? So our tradition is like that. We are not going to learn anything new. But this was not put into practice. And that was the reason that I started with these courses. Multidisciplinary. Uh, multidisciplinary. And when nobody was listening to me, then me and my wife mm. decided that why don't you have a trust mm. to disseminate whatever we have learned from our gurus mm. with this methodology mm. of bringing these knowledge systems together so that they can get, get benefit from each other. Outside the system of university education. Uh, because this is not I allowing could, could not reform it. Uh, <laughs> they were not ready. Mm. Uh, you'll be surprised. 
the chairman of university grants commission mm. once listened to my lecture in banaras hindu university mm. hari gautam is his name mm. he called me that professor ja mm. you must come tomorrow to delhi mm. and spend a day with me mm. i went mm. he said i request you mm. to take a responsibility mm. you prepare an common course for all the sanskrit departments of india mm. Mm. and you introduce this ideas to them so even that uniformity wasn't there no standardization uniform okay everybody is board of studies monarch. normally you have board of studies no no everybody is a monarch okay so i said i can take it but i do not have i have a little time in my life to do to if i take this responsibility from you somebody has to implement it so, ah, <laughs> you can create the framework so i will have to spend 3 years minimum mm. to do this and if after doing that if you say no 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 it's a nay hua not possible i don't want to give me a guarantee mm. that you are going to implement it mm. i accept it he said i give you guarantee i accepted that and i created a course and the course created course is lying in all the libraries of all the universities of india hasn't come out as it now then all started complaining to him is professor jha going to teach in all the universities because they didn't understand how to teach that <laughs> I said I had written a paragraph that I also take the responsibility of training teachers in this line. So some of the universities in the south, some of the ideas they, so they then he had he had no other go, he relaxed it. So okay, you whatever possible you do. So the northern side almost nil. okay uh, except delhi delhi did something and southern side of course some universities incorporated something but not not with that idea because every teacher has to learn them mm. absolutely mm. the given knowledge was not enough mm. to teach these courses so if that is the case of university education in sanskrit when now government talks about new education policy changing the whole thing I mean, it will remain. Remain it. This is a big gap. Yeah. Just a document. Ah. <laughs> so then, I decided. Decide. Doesn't matter which government. <laughs> so we decided that now we cannot depend on now this system. So let us. Nobody can stop me in sh- while sharing. So we thought of establishing this trust. It is a Rina Trust. The name also you have. Mm. You can understand. Wonderful. All that we have learned it. Or given by the rishis, this is not my creation. Paying back our debt. So debt our, so whatever we have received, we must give back to the society, and this is the only way to repay the. Because in Dharma Shastra, they talk of three rishis. One is Rishi Rishi, Pitri Rishi, and Deva Rishi. I mean, showing your gratitude. Mm-hmm. These are all for showing your gratitude. Mm-hmm. So teacher can show the gratitude. by teaching whatever he has learned from his guru mm. this is rishi rina mm. and therefore the name of the trust mm. is rishi rina trust this is what we did and with this all over the country wherever we have gone even in abroad the same thing we have been doing and we keep on doing by now all the six darshanas we have completed and six astika darshana we have mm-hmm. done but unless you are also familiar with the nastika darshanas because they were asking questions not only that the, the, the dialogue was not only nastika vastika astika among astika also mm. all do not see eye to eye they had different world views so means so maintaining your world views mm. without disturbing your world views what could be the method by which we can sit together and discuss mm. even those models were also created by our tradition mm. Mm. 
So Vatsayana created it, okay. You are a Buddhist, you want to maintain your thing. I am a Nayayaka. I will maintain Astika Darshan of this thing. How can we discuss? So all who will be sitting around the table must address only four aspects. Who is a knower? What is going to know? What is the process of knowing? And what is that knowledge that emerges? Chatasya evam vidasu artha tattvam parisamapriti You will come to a conclusion. Everyone will come to a conclusion. Provided you address faithfully, without any hypocrisy, address these four aspects. So analytical tools. Because they are not, no, Buddhists are not going to accept Veda Pramana. <laughs> so you can't use that. So you tell what right. it is, that's all. Right. right. So I will not say you cannot sit, I cannot talk to you. Right. Nothing like that. So the tradition of dialogue, you know, I don't have a parallel in the world, mm. the tradition. Mm. But unfortunately, mm. the 70 years here spent after independence, mm. we never thought of mm. incorporating this contribution to the mainstream of education. Mm. And therefore, the distance start wider and wider mm. and wider. As if we had nothing. Right, right. And often people blame Macaulay, but Macaulay is dead and gone 150 years ago. And we became independent 75 years ago. So how can you but blame Macaulay? Now we have to blame ourselves if we don't realize Because, what because you never care to see what it is. Right. You never looked into the contribution of our mm. own country. Mm. You always brought, brought some, some model from outside and started implementing it here, which has nothing to do with the culture of this country. And that meant that created a gap. Mm. And the gap went on widening and widening mm. and widening. So now you do not know what is to be taken. Mm. I do not know what is to be taken. But this should not have been the case. It was never the case. You see, all the Vedantis, how many Vedantas? Mm. Ramanuja also is a Vedantin. Mm. Madhu also is a Vedantin. Mm. Shankaracharya also is a Vedantin. Mm. Uh, 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 Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also mm. is a Vedantin. Mm. I was really amazed because I just thought that Advaita Vedanta is only Shankara. Oh. You, told, you said in one of the workshops there are at least six different Advaita Vedantas. Eight. Eight. Okay. <laughs> Vasava is a Vasava, is a Vedanta. Guru Nanak is a, uh, another form of Vedanta. So what? And, and all the Nimbaraka and Abhinavgupta and Bhartulari, uh, each one has his own so, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I mean, can there be another example of freedom of thought mm. than this? Tell me. Mm. Same sentence is being interpreted in one way mm. to support your own view. Mm. The same is being Mm. quoted by you mm. to support you, your own view. How is it possible? Mm. Is it not a challenge? Mm. Intellectual challenge it is. Absolutely. This should have been made available to the modern, modern education system. Mm. And this did not happen. Mm. And that gave us a lot of pain all through. Mm. That we are missing. Mm. So at least before we leave this mm. planet, mm. whatever little we have acquired, mm. why not? Share it. Sir, in the last 20-25 years, on behalf of this trust, etc., you have been conducting all these residential workshops, 10 days, 15 days, taking a text and really studying threadbare, you know, shloka by shloka, word by word, and then giving all this wider perspective of how other uh, schools think about this and all that. You, you, I have attended at least 6-7 of them and have greatly benefited from it. Now, what, what is the rough number of total workshops you have conducted like this? My God. In 20, 25 years now. No, I cannot do Because that. I, I know 6, 7. And so, every year you conduct. No, he also. At least 50 in 20 I years, so. 25 years. I have made a list in the past. I think no, I, it is worth 50 years. Yeah, mm. amazing. And More each one has at least 35, 40 students from all over yeah. India and some from abroad yeah. also. And. Uh, Earlier, the, even uh, the vice chancellor used to attend. Mm. In Baroda, mm. I had conducted one. Then there was one uh, very, very famous writer in Gujarati, uh, Jasasam Desai. 
He, he came and attended and he said, my God, I mean, this is, in any field you open, mm. because such a long tradition, you know, mm. and everything has happened only through dialogue. Mm. And have you had any interaction with traditional Acharyas? Have you had any interaction with the traditional Mahdi's oh, and Acharyas? Yes, yes, yes. And what do they think about this? Ah, so there are, there are, they are, they are divided. So no, your mission, what do they say about that? Ah, what your proposal? So, um, what I'm missing is that the kind of exposure that I had, mm -hmm. they did not have that kind of exposure. So, it is not that they will be, they will be there is an aversion, mm -hmm. but you need to ex explain it to them mm -hmm. and they are ready to listen to you. Okay. Ah. That, that means... But you, they're, they're your broad, broad uh, uh, learning as well as broad mindedness <coughs> is missing in many people. There is also uh, a certain amount of sectarianism, right? Uh, maybe, I mean, because of the... At least at the... No, no, no exposure to the uh, yeah. uh, 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 thoughts. Right. Now, I could get all this because I was exposed, you know. Right. So, what is required is that those who did not have a chance to get exposed should get exposed. Right. What we call the mm. modern modern education people mm. and this uh, traditional education system also mm. should be exposed what is called modern right. modern way of thinking like, Both <laughs> like for example you said once that first time when you talked about nyaya among advaita vedantis oh. they said you are a buddhist so you are a charvak so you are a charvak he was there he came to us are you charvak <laughs> So, this should happen and our trust aims at achieving whatever little is possible and that is why I always say that become volunteers. Mm -hmm. You learn it and one thing I say, don't depend on secondary sources. Mm -hmm. that, will be, that will mislead you. Mm -hmm. So, I always prefer textual workshops, right. you might have said. Yes, absolutely. All through, there should be a text. Right. You may agree, may not agree, does it doesn't matter. Right. I, because <coughs> my own little experience in this as a novice, as a dilettante, you can say I'm not a Sanskrit student and all that, I'm a science student, is that, uh, you know, there are actually even if you know the language, first of all, I don't know the language, let's say, that it is so contextual that without a Guru Shishya Parampara, you will not get the layers of meaning. No, Sitting not. with a dictionary or no. just reading an English translation not of possible. a text. Not possible. Mm. And many times they are misleading. Mm. Oh. Totally misleading. For example, first, I, when I heard about Sankhya and read about it, you know, they are talking about male principle and female principle. Mm. Okay? Prakriti. Purusha Prakriti. Right? And only when I attended the Sankhya workshop, you know, very clearly, Ujjala Madam saying that this doesn't mean the male and that doesn't mean female. You know, everybody has this. Purusha Prakriti is a principle. Yeah. For analytical purposes, we separate them, but they exist together. <laughs> Without that, Srishti is not possible. Existence is not possible type of thing. That is <laughs> so, it is essential, absolutely essential to go to the original text. And that education, unless you introduce the language, you know, for these purposes. Now, you must introduce Sanskrit in right from beginning, not for speaking in Sanskrit, but going into these knowledge systems. Exactly. That has not happened. That has not happened. And second and thing I was not aware of. Because generally people think Sanskrit to study the scriptures, oh. Dharma Shastras, oh. Vedas, whatever. Oh. But I was not aware that is only 5% of the literature in Sanskrit. 95% is secular literature. Mm. Not a Shastra, oh, yes. you know, Ayurveda, you know, all that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you know, actually all Ayurveda is based on Because the properties of the yeah. matter, mm. they are derived with the help of the Vaisheshika classification, right. analysis. And Sahitya. Yeah. All the aesthetic yeah. theories. Yeah. And even the Kavya and you know all that. So actually the even the Darshanic part is a small part of the vast Sanskrit yes. literature. So by not studying Sanskrit, you are all those doors are close to you. Mm -hmm. Then you have to go 
you learn you learn about it when europeans start talking about that <laughs> I remember, for example, when the Ganeri wrote that uh, last age of reason, many Indians who read that said, "Oh, we had this Navinaya, you know," <laughs> and it went to Europe, and Locke and Hume were aware of it and all that. No, <laughs> because you study Locke and Hume, maybe. Come to come come to modern modern most modern age, computer age, for example. No, the idea of decoding, for example, encoding and decoding, this is not new to uh, tradition. Pananis astadhyayi, you know, is exact. That is why now computer scientists are after Panani. They want to understand that how step by step giving commands, and ultimately you are getting the output, no? Mm. So the Chomsky got an idea from Panani, but unfortunately he has not acknowledged. He has not given that credit. That step by step. Giving the commands and then getting the input and then getting the output. It's an algorithm. Mm -hmm. The same thing happening in Ashtadhyayi. Mm -hmm. Rules are ordered in such a way that it should work like algebra, mm -hmm. mathematical mm -hmm. application. Mm -hmm. They all are engaged, mm -hmm. but we have not allowed our children to be acquainted with this. Mm -hmm. I remember one person in Darwar, Professor Mullathi, he wrote about Navinaya and symbolic logic. Exactly. And try to you know express it in that. So this thing should be made available in the mainstream of education, and that should be the aim. And to fulfill that aim, accordingly, Sanskrit language should be taught. Not for puja or not for uh, this thing. Other applications are okay. Who we'll do whatever like. I think this point you are making is very very important because. My own feeling is that you have always emphasized that uh, this knowledge can be used for abhidaya and nishraya. No, no. Okay. Now, what do youth get attracted to? To abhidaya. No, no. You can't expect them to say, "Now I'm going to renounce the world and you know, I'm going to think about no, no. moksha," right? No, where this advice is there. So now we have to present these knowledge systems as one of the sources for abhidaya. abhidaya. No, no. Then you'll get the youth. Otherwise. They will say, ah, when I am in my last stage, uh, or when I had solace. a traumatic experience and I need solace, I need a calm, then of course you know I'll come to you. Then you will only have that kind of persons and not the youth. That will be youth will say, I want to study computer science, I want to study in engineering or whatever else, biology, etc. I tell you, uh, Dr. Kanvi, the literature on decoding natural language mm -hmm. called Shabda Bodha Prakriya. Mm -hmm. So use. All students of computer science should study that to derive insights. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and this whole pramana shastra, you know, what is a valid pramana, what is a not valid pramana? Exactly. You you mentioned it once. That would be interesting to hear from you. How you uh, designed a course for law students? Yes. Mm. You know, I, I Puna. Was, Sixteen years I was teaching mm. Pune law, law school. Sixteen years. For example, theory of the inference. Mm. Now, our, uh, on Zoom, I am conducting the class mm. every Thursday. Mm. The mm. theory of inference, mm. level two, mm. going on. Mm. Mm. Now, theory of inference. Mm. What is theory of inference at all? And all these things are available on the website vidyavartika.org. Yeah. Right. So those who want to uh, attend these courses or even. Look at the videos from the past courses. They should come they to that website. They are all uploaded, uploaded on uh, our website www.vidyavatika.org. That's a wonderful name. Mm. Vatika is garden. Vidya Vatika, mm. <laughs> all full of flowers. You come and pick what you want. What you want? <laughs> okay. Your choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, how was that experiment, sir? Teaching Nyay Nyayika methods to. Prospective lawyers, law students. How was that? Oh, very, very. It was exciting. Exciting. I used to give, okay, that you have 10 cases now, mm. judgments you have of the judges. So you take any judgment and you convert that judgment into the format of theory of inference, mm. of Nyaya. Nya. Mm. And they used to find it tough, mm. very tough. But at the end, 
Because all you need what? First you convince yourself and then you convince others. No? These are only two, two, two processes involved. An advocate first gets convinced. Mm. He is called Swarthanuana. Mm. Mm. And once he is convinced, then he is going to convince the judge, no? Mm. Then he has to speak. Mm. He has to speak means? Language. Language. Mm. So he says you need only five sentences to utter. Pratigya, Hetu, Udharana, Upanaya, Nigamana. That's all. So I used to say, mm. convert all the judgment into these five sentences. Mm. Challenge? Mm. So you will have mastery over language, mm. mastery over logic, mm. and mastery over discourse. Mm. And these are the core knowledge systems mm. which are required for education for any man, mm. any human being in the world. Mm. Whether he is going to take up science mm. or social science or humanities, mm. anything. This is the basic requirement and this is what our tradition cherished did. Mm. This should have been made available right. in the education policy. And we see the chaos today, both in society and in the media, to open any TV channel, the kind of chaos that happens in the in the in the name of debate, you know, it's ridiculous. I mean they'll <laughs> drive everybody mad. So, in fact, people have stopped shutting it off. I you know, you, they would rather see some Sasbo this thing than this kind of debate. I, you remind, know? I, I remind you three terms I have already, you might have heard by my <laughs> That one is the ideal form of discourse is called Vada. Mm -hmm. uh, other through, two are, which is going on now, right. are Jalpa and Vitanda. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Tattva Bhutsu Katha. You see how beautiful. What is the aim of discourse? Mm. You should arrive at the truth. Mm. <clears throat> so that discourse which takes you to arriving at the truth mm. is Vada. Mm. So we have Vada Parampara. Mm. Vada Parampara. Mm. Buddhists also started writing in the same way. Mm. Once that common model was mm. created mm. by Vatsyayana, mm. all knowledge system mm. pro founders they advise them to write in the same format. Mm. So Buddhist also is writing mm. Pramana Mimamsa mm. or uh, Pramana Vartika. Mm. Jain also writing, mm. writing mm. Pram Pramaya Kamala Marthanda. Mm. Same terminology mm. as provided by Vatsyayana. Mm. Because he provided a common model, mm. common theory, mm. which will bring all of us together and without sacrificing one's own worldview, mm. can discuss and arrive at the truth. Mm. So we arrive, so we address these four things, that's all. Mm. And that was became a model for all. Mm. And up till now, mm. the same model is being followed. Mm. And what I what I was impressed by is that today there is absolutely no interest in listening to the other's point of view or understanding the other's point of view. Whereas the whole basis of Vada is Puro Paksha. Exactly. First understand others person you, sometimes even better than him. Mm. And present it even better than him. Mm. Right. Then you can do your Khandana. Mm. Your Uttara Paksha. Mm. And what a great uh, you know, tradition. Mm. You, you, if you bring even 0.01% of that among our debaters mm. and our TV debaters, then we'll have some sanity. <laughs> Same debate, you know, yeah. cultural yeah. debate. You can have a different point of view, but first understand the other's point of view, then you can put forward yours. Is then you will do the same. There is a, when the Lavinia language was created. You see, how the necessity is the mother of invention, no? So, when it, natural language, when I use, natural language has got the chance of getting ambiguous. Mm -hmm. Ambiguities. Absolutely. So, what, what you want to intend may not be understood by the listener. Mm -hmm. When they found that this is what is happening, mm. they created a new language for discourse mm. called Navinaya language. Mm. So Navinaya language is language to minimize mm. the chance of ambiguity mm. so that the dialogue becomes meaningful. Mm. What I want to say, convey to you, you understand the same way. Mm. And whatever you want to say, then I may accept, I may not accept. Mm. So rejection or acceptance is should be preceded by 
correct understanding. Mm. Clarity. That was also felicitated mm. by the tradition mm. by creating a new language mm. called the linear language. And this is the fundamental problem in computational linguistics or machine translation because of the ambiguity in exactly. natural languages. And Whereas machine, machine language is precise. Mm. So how will machines understand an ambiguous language? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So had this been introduced to those mm. students of computer science, they would have done wonders. Mm. Who knows? True. I want that such thing should happen. <laughs> now, um, one of the things is people like me who have neither studied the European tradition nor have we studied the Indian tradition and uh, maybe we are specialized in some engineering, medicine, physics, whatever, you know, social science even. So philosophically we are Krishankus, we are neither here nor there. And that is our, we, you can say, you know, you can call it cosmopolitan, rootless, you know, mm -hmm. or you can say, you know, so we, you, at least uh, if we are able to understand our heritage and then critique it, mm -hmm. no problem. Mm -hmm. But you understand. But first understand that heritage, mm -hmm. yeah. right? So today yes, we are, we, and neither do we understand the European heritage because mm -hmm. culturally we are not European. We are not there. Yeah. <laughs> Our samskara is different. Right. So, we might study European philosophy, European methodology, and but we are not European in thinking. Mm. And same thing happens to Europeans when they try to understand us. Exactly. And that's what T.S. Eliot and all <laughs> said that I can't. Mm. He, still, he said I stopped reading Patanjali because I am a European. This guy is going to convert me, <laughs> change me. <laughs> Is that right, sir? I mean, the, apparently, this is in his papers in Harvard University he has written now. Oh, he said that. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so the but at the same time, because of this whole confusion, there are various prejudices about Indian philosophy. Among the educated, you can say Western educated, whatever that is our current system. Uh, so some of these you already addressed, but I just want to mention some of them. First thing is, it's more a sociological criti criticism, which says that while if this knowledge system was so important and you know so useful, why was it kept away from Shudras and women? Why was it meant only for Brahmin males? This is one criticism. Of course, one can go into sociology and all that. But point is, at least we can't say that today. Today anybody can learn this, right? There is no restriction today. So there is no. What happened thousand no years ago, two thousand years ago, we'll look at it separately. So there is no point in bringing that angle now. Now, right? Now, if you want to critique it, critique it on on its essence, on it what right. it says, yes, yes. Rather than because now there is no restriction. In fact, what I see in many of your workshops is probably women uh, are more in number than men. <laughs> and. There is absolutely, people can come from any community I have seen, from yeah, all yeah, fields, yeah. all background people I have seen myself, you know, and who are, uh, basically there is a uh, interest in acquiring knowledge. that knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Knowledge. Yeah. Exactly. 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 So, if that is made the aim, yeah. these things are so... Hmm. Because that might have existed even 50 years ago, 100 years ago. Somebody saying, I am not going to teach you. Mm -hmm. Because people have mentioned that, you know, I went to so and so, he said, I don't know, you are from this caste, I am not going to teach you, etc. But that doesn't exist anymore. That cannot be the reason not to study now. This much I am clear. Now, Professor Jha is calling every day, come and learn. Come and learn, you know, come and learn, and if you want to be Ekalavya, you watch the videos and learn. Yeah, come and learn. True, true, true. Right? Okay. Second thing is, it says that it is dogmatic and not innovative. Not at all. Because of the concept of Veda Pramana. Uh, now, how do you address it? it? This is square. Where did innovation come from in this Square how? because of not getting exposed to it. It is only because of that ignorance. Such notions are protein. So I would advise them a small text you take first. Just for an enjoyment. And you, you may throw it after that and just enter into it and see whatever notion you are carrying, whether it has any uh, value or any, any truth in it or not. Mm. All along, 
the approach has been holistic, human centric, just to help to bring about transformation in man. Broaden your mind. Identify yourself with others. Even to the extent that whether there is something called others. Mm. You, may, you may discover that there is nothing called others. Mm. Now Shankara, for example, the ad Advaita, mm. there is no other. Mm. Aham Brahma mm. Tattva Masi, mm. Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma. Mm. No, what remains now? Where is the other? Mm. So there is no other. Mm. Okay. You are very much interested to maintain there is something other. Mm. Me, I don't want to lose my identity. Mm. Nyaya model you take. So maintaining every so even even if the cells are innumerable, mm -hmm. but atmatva is one mm -hmm. that universal is one mm -hmm. which is present in each and every self. Mm -hmm. So that again unites everybody. Mm -hmm. So without destroying individuality, mm -hmm. even then you can have. You can identify that I am the same Atma, the other one with the Atma. Mm -hmm. So both. Mm -hmm. So both the models are with you. Mm -hmm. One is of Shankara, mm -hmm. that there is no other. Mm -hmm. Another of Nyaya or Sankhya mm -hmm. model. Or even Shuddha Dvaita. Mm -hmm. Shuddha Dvaita. No, Shuddha Dvaita will take it to uh, Same essence but uh, different forms. Uh, different, uh, but you will ultimately come, come from one and many. Mm -hmm. But ultimately many. Mm -hmm. Correct. Ultimately, diversity here to explain. Okay. Uh, diversity exists. <laughs> even, even that luxury is, is, is with you. Yeah. You maintain that you are Kanvi. Mm. I am Jha. Mm. He is Kukani. Mm. And even then we are all one. Right. Even that has been done. Mm. So all along the aim has been to help mm. broaden your mind. Mm get included, inclusive, mm -hmm. and get transformed huh? mm -hmm. through transformations. Mm -hmm. So the aim is transformation. Mm -hmm. So darshana mm -hmm. or should not be equated with philosophy. Mm -hmm. Darshana is realization. Mm -hmm. You create a environment to realize mm -hmm. that we all are one. Mm -hmm. So the purposes of both the Philosophy, that's a love for knowledge, love for wisdom, is different from the purpose of darshan. Exactly. This is, if you confuse that, then we will not find No. Translation is... So, here the purpose is to create a better human being, more empathetic, you know, etc. And morally, morality, you know, duty, which is called dharma. So, another term is the same. And so on. So, and Sada Sad Viveka, power of discrimination, what is right, what is wrong. So approach is holistic. And you can come from many different paths any path. for that. You can be Buddhist, you can be Jain, you can be anybody. Is it not fascinating mm. that so, either you say that there is no other, mm. Mm. it is very easy. Tat mm. Tat, same you are. Aham mm. Brahma Asmi, Sarvam Kalavidam Brahma. Where is other? Mm. So if this understanding creates, mm. it's a different kind of a world altogether. True. Okay. You don't know, you are not happy mm. that our oh, Kanvi should remain Kanvi. Mm. But still Kanvi and Jha can be one. Right. Because they, they can be good neighbors, they can be good human beings, you know. Even so that the world, there is some harmony in the world. Mm. And not full of hate and revenge and suspicion and all that, which is what we are getting now. <laughs> this we have lost by not getting exposed to our traditional knowledge systems. This is my understanding of the whole life. And that is why this understanding does not allow me to sit quiet. And I feel that whatever little I know should be passed on to the next generation. Sir, one other more sophisticated criticism I have seen. It's again a partly sociological, partly philosophical, which says that the idealism in Vedanta overpowered the rationality of other schools, like Nyaya and others. How justified is this? 
particularly think, people like Chattopadhyay and all make this. Uh, I think <laughs> the way I'm presenting it, it doesn't have that a scope now. These are two models. Why don't you take it to be two models? So whether you want to emphasize individualism or universal mm. universalism. The diversity and the oneness. So these are two extremes. Actually, no. the, there is a Madhya Mark. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we are diverse, but there is some commonality, some oneness also. But uh, <laughs> when, you, when, you, when you take up this uh, Nyaya model mm. of Purusha Bahutva mm. or Sankhya model of Purusha Bahutva, mm. there, is no, there is no clash. Mm. Even then, I and you are same. Mm. Because I also have got Atmatva mm. and you also have Atmatva. You can say we are all made of Parmanos. <laughs> what is the also. What is the made of Parmanos? Yeah, yeah. Parmanos. But Atma is Atma. So Atmatva Jati, Atmatva, Atmatva Samanya, Atmatva Universal is uniting all individuals. So we are the same. So there is other, but still there is no hatred, there is no this thing, nothing of the sort. So I think uh, uh, Chattopadhyay and others, mm. those, those who take, they got so much, I mean, taken away by the mm. uh, Shankara's mm. right. model of right. oneness. And also I think, anyway, that's a whole different debate between theism and atheism, it will go on forever. It has gone on forever and it will go on forever. So there is no point in then dividing on theism, atheism basis mm. because, anyway, so uh, coming to other thing is, uh, one more criti criticism is whole Indian approach, at least a traditional approach, is not based on rationality but based on faith and ritual. This, this is absolutely absurd. So it's again taking one aspect of it, uh, one part of it, uh, and accusing that the whole is the same. No, that way again I'll repeat that example. Mm. If had, if this 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 were two then how the same Upanishad has given rise to so many systems of Vedanta. If you do not allow rationality, then everybody should speak the same language, no? But there should not be Madhva, there should not be Ramananda, there should not be uh, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The very fact that they allow various interpretations of the same implies that you are free, there is no dogmatism, there is rationality, which is worshipped, celebrated. Otherwise this cannot happen. Because one of the one of the values which in Europe we find in Renaissance is that of right of conscience. Mm. Okay, that nobody will dictate what you should think. Mm. I am free to, you know, build my own model. Right? Mm. So this went against this whole dictation by the church and the Pope and papacy, etc. etc. Mm. Or, you know, any kind of authority saying only this way you can think everything else is a Never has happened here. Huh. So, that, if we maintain those values, I think we'll have a democratic society. <laughs> we'll have a harmonious society. If we try to uniform, make the thinking uniform, there will be rebellion against it. <laughs> there won't be harmony, there will be division, there will be polarization. <laughs> so, diversity in thinking also, free thinking, free, different models, you know, as long as you are not hurting anyone. Yes. You can have a different point of view, but you are not like with that, you are not hurting anyone. That's, that's all. That's good. That's all. And neither are you imposing it on somebody else. Hmm. You know, it is up to so, them to accept it or not. Period, periodically, therefore, that used to be with the Panishad. <laughs> so, Madhu will come, hmm. Brahmanaja will come, uh, Shankaracharya will come. Different all schools. Will come. Hmm. And then they will discuss this issue. Hmm. And they will. The, you see, if I'm a participant mm. and if I oppose it, mm. I have to prove it, no? Mm. So without rationality, without Anumana, mm. how are you going to prove? Mm. Right. So without rationality, nothing could happen. Mm. Mm. Even in the Upanishad time. You have to argue on the basis of reasoning. You can't yes. say, this is the authority. Because if I you don't accept it, then we will prove it. Yeah. Mm. I think it. Finally, no, nothing yeah. like that. Why do you think That's why they had to argue with Charvaka also. Mm. Exactly. Right. Right. Even right. though he didn't accept Veda Pramana. Mm. <laughs> Still. Oh, exactly. He was asked to give me the ground. Mm. 
the moment is the gram, then you have to accept second pramana, <laughs> call anumana. Then, then observation is not enough. Inference is required. Then I call, I call uh, scientists as Charvaka because of this. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. But I think, I think so scientists very much use anumana. So six is No, no. Scientists very much invoke anumana in modeling, exactly. in theory. Only thing they say is test is in observation. Final test is in observation. Right. Just so like you say, protection problem is the highest. Protection is the highest. Therefore, everybody. Right. No That's problem. True. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, From the last five minutes, maybe. Okay. Yeah. And it is yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yes, I think that seven. that more or less uh, mm. you know covers many uh, aspects of what is of value for us as modern human beings, modern Indians to learn from our own heritage mm. and then it is up to us how much we can digest and how we can use it and what sooner, we want to reject and what we want to keep. Mm. Sooner the better. Yeah. Mm. We have delayed a lot. I think it is better to look into it sooner to create a better society, good human being, good neighbor good family and what not and get transformed. Sir, I probably I mentioned it to you once before. Marx <coughs> says this. Marx said, I have to settle scores with my philosophical conscience, my intellectual heritage, Kant, Feuerbach, Hegel, the German philosophical tradition. Mm -hmm. So have we settled scores with our tradition? <laughs> that is a question. I think Get exposed, get, get exposed as early as possible. <laughs> Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. I'll stop here, okay? Yeah.